Hey, my beautiful bitches, it's me, Fiona St. James, and welcome to another episode of Fiona's Coffee Talks. And as always, I like to start off every day with a fresh, hot, black cup of coffee. Hold the cream! I'd love to. And of course, I think of my favorite quote of the century by Oscar Wilde, which says, life is too important to be taken seriously, so lighten up, folks. So today's topic is, drum roll, please, retail time, part three, yay! All right. So when we last left off, I had started in 92. And the reason I did it was because I was like, oh, I got to do my part for the economy. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was fine. And then I started off as a makeup artist for Elizabeth Arden, followed by Shiseido. Well, that was like from August of 92 through like early 93. So then fast forward, it's 93. I had been working there about six months. And when you do retail, you know, and if you work in the beauty industry, which is basically cosmetics and fragrances, you know, you don't work for the source. I was not getting paid by Bloomingdale's or Federated, which is what it is now, <clears throat> excuse me, but you would get paid by the company. And unless you were permanent with the company, the majority of us freelanced. So, and usually anyone who does makeup, also does skincare, also does fragrances. So then it was at early 93, like when I finished with those two companies, that suddenly I was like, oh, let me do fragrances. So then I started freelancing and fragrances. And those uh, first couple of years, so like 93 to about 94, there was not a single company that I did not work for. And because at Bloomingdale's, what happened back then was every week, a different company would be in promotion. Promotion is always Friday through Thursday. And that's where like when you would go into department stores and you see these annoying bitches standing like at these like outposts, they were, they're called, like these freestanding outposts. And like everywhere you walk, they would be there like with their bottles. Oh, would you like to try, you know, whoever it is that you were working for? That's basically freelancing. Uh, not the easiest thing in the world, because it's like how they would do it back then. It was so saturated in that, like they would have outposts everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere, even like the two entrances, 59th seat and 60th, when you would enter, there would be someone standing there, like literally right at the foot of the stairs that people had to go up. So then all of a sudden they go up the stairs and at the top of the stairs would be yet another outpost. So it was like the, the distance between where people were standing, promoting the same exact fragrance was not very far from one another. And then of course, you know, it's all the numbers game. So they expect you to like sell all these bottles of shit that most of them don't even smell good. And let me tell you, honey, fragrances by and large, the majority, uh-uh. I worked in fragrances, you know, for so many years that, I've never been one to wear one. Uh, I don't like it. I get the appeal, but I know how about take a shower instead <laughs> and then just, you know, smell good that way. But I mean, I understand the appeal, but it is also very much a luxury item. It's not a necessity, but you know, you'd be amazed how people go and spend their money or waste their money on shit that they don't need. So, uh, but by and large, you know, even doing fragrances and even working at those outposts, you know, it was tiring because you are on your feet the whole time and you're basically stuck there and you'll, you'll get like your one hour lunch break, which normally they don't pay. And then you get like two 20 minute breaks. But when you're there store hours, which a lot of times would be like 10 hours as the store would be open like 10 to 830 and you're doing store hours seven days a week. And then you're doing that week after week after week. It becomes a bit much, but you know, you have fun with it. You make the best of it. You make money, you know, didn't really matter. Like even if, cause if you're freelancing, you're not on commission. So even if you didn't necessarily sell a lot, it's not like you were getting, you know, getting any kind of commission where you were counting on that. You would get, you got paid the same whether you sold or didn't sell. Of course you wanted to sell because you don't want to have a reputation as someone that's just standing there and can't produce shit. Companies don't like that. You don't feel good about it. Other, you know, but it, it's it's what it is. You know, the unfortunate reality is not everyone is going to have a great day. And then there, there were also like key locations that if you were set at these specific locations, just by virtue of where they were located, you automatically sold much more at those places. And then so even that would kind of be a pain in the butt because it, it was almost like this, 
catch 22 where like certain certain people were known for being at certain spots because they would sell a lot there but then the question becomes is it so much that they're such a great seller or is it because of where they're located and then you know you were, and then there were certain spots that were known for like being hideous in terms of being able to produce because they were not in a desirable location or they would be in a spot that would be like not on the main floor but on like the second floor or fourth floor and the higher up you got by the time people got there they would be bombarded by everyone on the main floor and then last but not least the, the other thing that would work against you would be some of these clients or customers i should say clients what am i talking about some of these customers they would not recognize that like you would spend all this time with them telling them about the product okay let me think about it i'll get it on the way back but then all of a sudden you know they, they have the memory of a fruit fly and then they'll go they'll walk and end up at the other end of the store and then suddenly they realize that they like it and then someone else would be there selling the same shit and they'll be like oh I, i'll take it then the funny part is you would they would like pass by you again later on and then you'd be like oh did you want to get it? And then they like hold their bag up. Oh, I got it already. Well, fuck you, bitch. I spent all this time with you and you bought it off someone else. So then we, we all kind of learned that you would say to them, do me a favor. If you decide that you want to get it, come back to me. And half the time they would listen. But then the other half, again, there goes that fruit fly memory thing. They would still get it elsewhere. And then still <laughs> say to you, look what I got. And then you, I would say, well, bitch, I told you to come back to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you sure are. So anyway, but by and large, I enjoyed it. And throughout the 25 years that I was there, you're going to hear as like the series goes on that, that I would go from like makeup to fragrances to like management to this to that. Skincare ultimately ended up being my favorite thing to do, but we're going to get to that later on. So fragrances, like from 93 to about 94 was when I was freelancing a lot. Then you're going to hear about like a company that I ended up permanent with, but we're going to leave this at that and quit while I'm ahead. So, all right, guys, don't forget thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, tell your friends all about my channel and all of my other social media is at Fiona St. James. Oh, excuse me. The Saints is not spelled out, just ST, no period after that. And also, uh, FionaStJames.com is where you can get my self-published memoirs, The Life and Crimes of Fiona St. James. All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here with me, and I will see you soon. Love you.